In this video I will show how to create a simple dialog box uh, so that the user can uh, input data to the application and uh, read data from the application and modify the data so it's the user interface so the user can type some information and then the program can react for example we could we could want to change the background color of the of the window and uh, print some text so the user can type the text and then select the color and then when he presses ok in the dialog box then the uh, the changes will be shown in the program so let's see how we can how we can make this dialog box first we will create a simple project new project mfc and let's call it simple dialog project we will make a simple single document and um, next and we don't need any of these here and there we go first thing is that we need to create the resource for the dialog first I will select this select this project to be the current project and then we go to the resource view here and we will create a new dialog resource so this will tell the application how the dialog box is gonna look like so we're going to insert dialog and there we have this dialog and first <coughs> we want to have the edit box where the user can text uh, user can type the text he wants to be shown in a window so let's say we're going to put an edit box here so this will be the text the user want to see in the window and let's put the title for it so we put the static static text here and uh, <coughs> so then I press this and I go and I, I can here right click and say properties and we will get this one on our right, right hand side and then I scroll up and uh, let's put here text so we call it text we will make this one a little bit bigger this one smaller okay so this will be the text we want to see when the user press ok we will show this text in the, in the, in the window and then we want to before I do this let me run this code so I can show how it look how the program program looks like right now and what are we aiming for so here is the simple project we get and uh, what we want we want a menu item here that we can get an options from here when we click here like this we will get an option and then we, when we we will get the dialog box here and then we can type the text and then we can type the background of this background color of this window at the moment it's white that let's say that we want the blue or red we can select the color and then we can select the position of the text where we want to see it for example blue background color black background background color and we want the text to be shown here let's say like that that's what we want here so here's the text and then we want um, we want let's say that we have two possibilities we, we can have a red or blue color as a background color for the window if there are only two options then we could just create a radio button group so to do that so we only need two, two, radio, two one. It can be red or blue. So we can put radio buttons for that. First, we need the group box to put these radio, put radio buttons inside the group box. So we select group box here. We'll put it here like that. Now, if we want only one of them be selected, uh, like let's say that we have even three, three three values three options like blue green white then we need the group box 
so that the MFC knows that they are together. So they need to be inside the group box like this and then after that we can put the radio buttons. In this case we have only two. So I put them like this. Okay. Okay. I will I will first uh do the rest here and then we will come back to this radio button how to finish this is not finished yet but I will add the last thing here which was the position of the text we want to uh, define the position of the text here's the text and we want to define where do we want to see it so we want we need x and y positions to do that we will create two two edit boxes so x for x and y and then we need the static text to tell what values we are asking. And with the arrows, arrows, I can move them. <coughs> so let's um, make this uh, X position. Like let's say X position. And here we're going to put Y position. Something like this. With the arrows I can move them. And let's move them closer here. Because they belong to this section. I'm not so, so much concentrating on how it looks right now. So I'm just roughly putting them in a, in, a, in a good place. Okay, so now we have all of these. So after this, now one important thing when doing the radio buttons, what we gonna, what we want at the end of the day is that we want one indexer defining the, the the selection. If we had, if we had we three, if we had uh, five five of these selections, then zero will be the first selection. Uh, one would mean the second two would mean the next one and so on. So one integer tells what what we select because only one of them can be selected at a time. If I select this one then it, this is empty and if I select this one this is empty. So so to do this the first one needs to be selected here as a group. It means that it's the first control for the group as it says here. So let's select this one be the first one in a group. So we need to set this one to true and this one needs to be false now, okay? And it is false, that's fine. And the second thing we need to do here <coughs> so that this works, this radio button, that we need to set the top order so that uh, this one is one plus this one. So if this is four, this one must be five. And if there was a third one, it should be uh, four, five, six. Let's see what we have at the moment. So we're gonna go to where is it again? Here is uh, in format and tab order. We need to, and now we can see. Okay, we are a little bit lucky. There, it is six and seven, but but it's not necessarily like this. Um, it, it's possible that we have six and fifteen, for example, here. So we need to make sure. But let's make the tab order nice straight away because this is gonna be that when when you press the tabulator tabulator on the keyboard it means that where does it jump next so let's say that this is the first okay you just click here second third fourth fifth sixth okay i'm happy with this one okay so when we select with the when we press the tab a key it will go in this order first here the focus will change according to these numbers that's fine so we have two and three so now it's um, correct so I will take it off. Next thing we need, we need here is that, <coughs> okay, before we can, okay, we can we can actually now um, make these IDs first. So the ID is here. Let's call this one edit, um, just text. The ID defines that which control we are talking about. It identifies the control. The, these are all controls. 
and it, it identifies the control. So this control we will say radio um, radio um, uh, red red will be the red. Well, the text is wrong, so we go here and change the text from here. Let's say red, and this text needs to be changed the blue blue back background color and this group also needs to be changed um, let's say the background window window background color window background color so red and red or blue uh, what else we need to change okay these are done Oh no, this is not done. So this needs to be radio blue. This needs to be um, edit edit box and um, let's say position X, and this will be position Y. Good. Now all of them has a valid nice ID. Okay, then save all. So next thing we need, we better do is here that we now we need to create the, a class for this dialog box. This is this is not the dialog itself. This is just the definition that how does the button look like? Where is the button located at? Where is this button located at? It's just the appearance stuff. Okay. It just tells that which controls um, and where are they located at and their IDs, but uh, but the control themselves and the class, this dialog itself has not been created yet. We need the class for that. We need the dialog class for that. So we need to link a dialog class with this one. This is just a resource. So we need to create the class for this. So to do that, we just right, right click uh, here and add class C like class and then we're gonna call it let's call it options dialog DLG like a dialog let's choose dialog or dialog X it's the, almost the same oh it already exists some dialog why does it already exist? Uh, for some reason it already exists, maybe... Okay, I'm going to change then the name to something else. It's probably because I was testing something before, so there's some name conflicts. So I'm going to name it C uh, option, just options, and finish. So here we have the options dialog. Okay, <coughs> so now we have the dialog and it's linked. With this here, here we can here we see IDD. In um, here is the ID for the dialog. Uh, well, one more thing, if we want to make it nice, this this ID is not actually nice. So I'm gonna change this ID here to options because it's an options options dialog. Okay, and also the title is not nice, so I'm gonna change this caption to just options. Options. Okay, now it's nice, and I'm gonna save all. I'm, I'm gonna actually go and check that it, it did change the. Okay, this is not changed, by the way. <laughs> it didn't automatically change this, uh, which I was a bit surprised. So we need to manually now go here and select the dialog and copy this ID. But it's good to know how to do these things manually as well. So we copy this uh, dialog ID here because this class needs to refer to this uh, this resource here. Okay, 
so it didn't automatically change it so I'm gonna change it now manually here okay so now it now it again uses it right so now there is okay there is no interaction with the data yet and these controls are not linked to anything yet but let's just launch this um, dialog because, because we can actually now uh, launch this dialog because we have the class now ready so let's just do it even though it doesn't do do anything this dialog yet but let's just um, open it for fun so to do that we need to include this um, dialog we're gonna launch it, we're gonna launch it in in this in this uh, view view class so I'm gonna include this uh, dialog here okay so the qu next question is that when are we gonna launch this uh, dialog box at the beginning I already said that we need we want to do it from the menu so let's go back to the resource and uh, do that menu item there so I go to the menu and mainframe and let's create a new I just tick here here and I type here that um, I call it settings oh, how do they call it well we have here the same thing isn't it so tools ah it's called tools let's do the same thing here so so I call it tools like the visual C has also tools here and then here we're gonna put options like that and now I select this one and I right click and uh, insert something at event handler okay we want to add an event handler for this and this one this one tells that so we need to select the command from here and here we can select uh, when we select that menu item in which class we will handle that that message uh, that event handler in this case we want to handle it in the same class uh, I mean where we're gonna change the windows color and where, we, where we're gonna draw the uh, draw that message and that's this view so I'm selecting this view and uh, <coughs> excuse me press this button and so it creates this um, message handler here in a view on tools op on tools options so here we can now create that uh, dialog box I already included the dialog uh, class here so header file so we can use it now so let's create an instance of this class Oops. go here and do it again copy paste and that's called dialog dialog options and we just can say now that uh, do modal do modal dialog and that's it this should launch the, the dialog box if I did everything correctly it should launch now the dialog box ah there is an error okay we have problems now with that ID which I was uh, changing before ah uh, I changed this from the header file as 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 uh, before I changed this one but I forgot to change it from the CPP file because it's also in the corresponding option CPP file here so I forgot to change it here as well so we have the old ID uh, dialog ID here so I need to also put it here and let me check so there's nothing else here so now it should compile okay and succeeded here so we run this program now and tools and there we go voila so here we have the box here okay it doesn't there's no no action happening so whatever I do here nothing happens but this one works here as you can see this this um, this is already working it selects only one of them correctly okay so whatever I do here nothing happens so let's do the action now so to start doing that we go back to the dialog uh, resource okay the first thing we need to do is that we need to add 
a variable for each of these controls for this one, for this group, for this one and for this one. Let's add first uh, a variable for this one. Add variable. So this will go inside the options dialog, this variable. We, we are talking about the value because we are talking about the string value so I select value from here. We are interested about the value and let's call it just text. So the text will contain the text which user types there. So I pressed OK now. So now let's go and see where it went. So it, it went to this option dialog. So this is the dialog class here. So it created a public member here, here text. And if I go to corresponding CPP file, we can see the initialization value here. Here is the initialization value. And uh, I can initialize it here, by the way, if I want, like enter text. This is, the, this is the initialization for that variable. So if we run it now, we will see this text there by default now because it uses that one there. I think so. There we go. Enter text. Okay. I think uh, empty text is good for good for now. So I take it out. Let's do the other ones now. And so we need one here. As I said before, th this group only needs one integer, and it will be cr it must be created for the first one, first radio button, not for this one, but for this one. That's how MFC works. It needs to be under this group, these two. And the top order needs to be that uh, like five, six. They need to be in an order like that. One plus the, uh, the one before. And the third thing is that we need to create the variable for the first one. So I click the, for the, the first radio button, uh, right click and add variable. So it's going to be a value again, the integer value. And it's not boolean, it's an integer value. So we select int from here. I'm, I'm going to call it M and uh, that's a color, a background color. So it's background color. Finish. That's done. And let's do these ones as well. So X position at variable. That's going to be a value. Uh, now this is going to be an integer because. Um, X position, it's going to be something like uh, 500 or 1000 or something like that, it's, but it can't be negative. Uh, we're not going to accept negative, so I'm going to, it's so a minimum value of zero. And we, we need to put something here. Well, I don't know what is the highest number, but let's just put some very big number here. And uh, well, in, in practice, it's going to be like maximum 1500, but okay, and let's call it M, just X. looks good. Same thing here. Well, these two values uh, are, are here so that the, the dialog box can check the, the validity of the values. So if we, if we enter minus five, it will given a message box that you can't, uh, it can't be less than zero. That's what it is all about. So it just makes sure that we don't enter uh, negative values. M, Y. Okay, that's it. We have now everything here. And let's go quickly see. And here they are. Here, here are all of them. It added all of them here. And let's go to the CPP file to see the inis initialization values. As, as you can see, the color is initialized to the first value, zero. If, if we change it to one, it will be the second one selected by default. Let's run this now. So the second one is selected because I selected one here by default. And if I put back this to zero, like we normally want, let and I will put just for fun seven here, just to show that it puts the default value. And that's it. There's the seven and red. Okay. 
let's put back the the good values here. Yeah, like that. Now, next thing we need here is that we need to actually um, do the drawing. Let's go back here and start doing the drawing now. This is the white window at the moment. The uh, the white window, the window uh, which has the white background color. So it's this window here. That's the view here. To draw something in this view, we need to go to the on draw function here. So this is a drawing context we need to draw. So let's start drawing. First, we're gonna draw <coughs> the background background colors. Let's just draw something fixed first. So we need to get the client rec first. So C rect client rect and it's gonna be like this get client rect so this one receives the client rec the current white area of the of the window the rectangle the left top right bottom values so this rectangle contains left bottom right right top values now of that visible window and let's um, fill it with some color so we need to use the drawing context to draw there so fill solid color fill solid sorry <laughs> fill solid rect i mean and what is the first parameter that was that's the rect okay so we're gonna put this rect here we're gonna draw the, all the all the screen and this is the color so let's put just uh, rgb this is the macro rgb which creates the color uh, so let's put let's make a red first red zeros that's red red green blue so we have a full red no no bl no green no blue and then let's print the text as well so again we print the text using the device context and um, text out is the way to one way to do it first we need to put the coordinates let's put one one two 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 three 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 and let's put normally these things are are um a unicode so because it's unicode we need to put this t here because the unicode string so we can even write chinese letters there that's why and but we are english so we if any chinese is watching this um series i'm sorry but i can't i don't know how to type in chinese so maybe somebody can help me in the comment section okay anyway i'm just gonna put here hello in english and um, right let's see if this works now so we should have something drawn there And it works. So here is the hello, hello. And if, if even if I create, make this bigger, this it keeps full because it always goes there and draws a new one. It gets the new uh, client rect. So that's always going to be the current visible client rect. So it fills it up properly. And for example, if I let's say that we want to only only uh, draw with this color to half of it, we could easily do that. So I can just we could change this. We can change the, that will be the right isn't it the right needs to be halved isn't it so right um divided uh, by divided by two i think right is right divided by, divided by two and let's try this one and there you go only the half of it is drawn okay but this looks like a polish flag so <laughs> let's put it back to what it was right. right so now instead of using these fixed colors we need to use the, the, the all the values needs to be from the dialog box to do that we need also those same variables here in the view class because we're gonna because this this function needs to use them and that dialog box will be will be destroyed at the end of this call here it it starts here and it will be destroyed here so we can't ask this dialog uh, 
uh, those values. So we need to save them here also inside this class. So we have to have the same variables here. So I'm going to copy these variables here and I'm going to paste them here in a private section here. Private. There we go. They can, they can have the same names, why not? And now we need to copy those values from the dialog. How, how are we going to do it? Well, the way to do it is that when the user press uh, OK button in the dialog box, this do modal will return value idoc. Okay, so that's why we're going to check this one against idoc. If the user presses cancel, then we're going to we do nothing, obviously. So we only react if the user presses uh, OK. That's why I'm checking the return value against the uh, idoc ID OK. If the user press OK, then we're going to here we're going to copy those values from the dialog. The dialog still exists. It, it doesn't. Uh, it's not been deleted yet, so we can ask the values. It's gonna copy them. So I'm gonna copy all these values from the dialog. They have the same names, these variables, so it's quite easy to copy like this. And to look nice, I want to use this double up there. So I like this this kind of stuff. So <coughs> okay, so let's try now if this works. Oh, it doesn't work because we are not using these variables yet. So when we are drawing, we need to use these these things there. So this one, this one, and this one, and what else? And this and the color here. Okay. So let's start using them. So x, first of all, x goes here, y goes here, the text will be going here, and the color needs to go here. Well, we have only two colors now, which was, was it red, in which order they are, they are in red and blue, okay. So this is not the best way to do it, I'm not saying, but just quickly doing somehow. So we are just checking here that which value we have here. So if this is a zero, it's a red. If it's a one, it's blue. So we're gonna check the value of that uh, uh, integer. If this one is zero, then we're gonna do. So this is correct, red. Else, if if it's one, that means that we want to have a blue background color, which means that zero. 0, 255. Right, so now we are using all these values. One more thing that let's initialize them with some something. So text will be, um, we could put something here like, um, what are we going to say here by default? Um, place text here as I've looked at background color maybe let's initialize it with the value 0 that's red and let's initialize this x by 100 and 200 okay <coughs> let's run this current version now We should have the initial value values used in drawing now. Let's see. And we have. So there's the red color and there is the text placed in 100, 200. At the position 100, 200. And now if I go to the tools and I run this, I can put hello here. Blue and uh, 11, 22. Okay, nothing happened good question is that why nothing happened but when I move this window now if I resize or do something that it must repaint this area it will do it I will guarantee 
let's see so I a little bit change the size there you go so the problem is that it didn't update the window immediately when we came back from the dialog box here so how can we force it to update the window straight away the way to do is that we need to make the whole whole area invalid so I'm saying invalid invalidate validate okay that invali invalidates the whole window that it, it's kind of dirty it needs to it all area needs repainting and then we need to ask it to repaint which will be update window this will update this will ask to do the ret redrawing for all the invalidated areas so now this one works I know it works so I'm not even running it just please trust me <laughs> I have long experience okay <coughs> I hope my voice will last long I need to drink something maybe just a second okay I feel better now uh, there's one more problem here that when we when we open the when we open the dialog box by default what we really want here is let me open it here this is this doesn't open correctly in my opinion the text should be the old text so there should be here now when we when I launch this there should be place the old text which is placed text here this would be red and so on if it was a blue it, it should be here if it was this one blue so the old values needs to be here so how can we do that one it's quite easy uh, we create the uh, dialog object here so after that we will uh, set the initialization values here uh, uh, and that's how the dialog will be launched with the uh, previous values so we just need to do the opposite we need to do the opposite here to this one so we just copy that and switch and switch the right side on on the left hand side And now this project should work perfectly. And let's test this project now. Okay, so now we have the values, current values there, and the position is the current, the last position. Let's change the text. I like tomatoes. <coughs> Sometimes I do like uh, blue. Let's put 510. 11 there we go I like tomatoes is there when I run it again we have the old values here and I like tomatoes too so there's a two here okay it all works nicely this one ends this video and thank you for watching